Okay guys, what I'm doing today is I'm making an all butter, little bit of oil, body butter. And you might say, aren't all body butters? Um, oil, all butter? No, they're not. There are some that have water in them. I even have one myself that has some water. It's thicker than a cream, but it's not as thick as this. And this is for very dry skin. I had oily skin as a teenager. As an adult, I've had pretty normal skin with um, some patches of dry, some patches of oily. So to me, this seems very oily, but I have friends and relatives with dry skin that just love this. So if you're a formulator and you know you think that this is pretty uh, oily, you know don't go by your skin type. Ask people who have dry skin because this is for dry skin. So what I'm doing right now is I've got my my water boiling so that I can sterilize everything including my bowl here. I'm going to use my KitchenAid mixer to mix this and those of you who know me with my KitchenAid I'm not a huge fan of it um, of the KitchenAid uh, for various reasons. I might try the paddle this time but anyway that's what I'm going to use. I prefer the any mixers with double beaters for this and for most of my products. Um, but right now what I'm doing is I'm getting my water boiling to sterilize everything and then I'm writing my recipe on my butcher paper so that I can get anything that could possibly be contaminated with the least little thing out of my workspace so that my product is as wonderful and as sanitary as it could be. Because there's no water in this and because it's body butter, it shouldn't go in the shower, there's not a preservative. So that is all the more reason why you must, must, must have an absolutely sterile environment, as sterile as you can possibly make it. So I'm going to finish all this up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I want to start out as I normally do with sanitation. But I just want to do a few things that I haven't done because again, this is a not, this is a product without a preservative. So you definitely want everything to be as sterile as possible, which means sterilizing all along the way. Now I'm going to put a mask on, so my voice might be muffled after this, and I'm going to put my hair back. But I want you to understand that I have water boiling over here and these are the bowls that I'm going to put my butters into. I'm going to dip them into the boiling water and there's a little bit of bleach solution there and then I'm going to wipe it out and then when I put it on here, before I put even the butters in, I'm going to alcohol it. I want as the best sanitation I can get. When I see videos of people that I really like, I really like what they have to say, I really like the recipes, but I see they're in the kitchen, they're making soap with lye, they've got the sugar over here, you know, the sugar that the family uses, the flour, the spices, you know, the, the kitchen implements, and they're just making soap in front of it. It makes me crazy. It makes, now I know that there's lye in soap and the chances of something being contaminated is very low, but there was a chance of the kitchen products that you're using for your family getting lie on them. So if somebody is careless in that regard, I also wonder what else they're careless in, you know, with regard to as far as sanitizing things. So if you're making videos and you're showing your customers how you make your products, make sure that your area is as sanitary as possible. Not just so that your customers feel better, but so that you know absolutely you're making the best product there possibly is. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tongs, I'm going to put them in the water, swish it around. There's a little bit of bleach in there, not much. And then I'm going to take my bowl.
and that is sanitation part one. And then I'm going to put it here and I'm going to get my alcohol. I'm going to alcohol the ball out before I put any butter in here. Okay, those of you who've seen my videos before know that I keep my alcohol in purple jars. So I also want to alcohol my jars before I bring any of my product out. So one alcohol. And now the next alcohol. And a lot of times throughout this process, you'll see me alcohol my gloves for touching, you know, things that have just been alcoholed or, you know, something like that. But I just want to explain that in case you see me doing that. So I got alcohol on my scale, which is good. Even though it's been alcohol, I'm going to alcohol it again. And I always pop the top of it off and put it in the dishwasher every night, even if it doesn't look like it needs it, because once I bring my product out, I'm going to put a paper towel on here. So, so that is my alcohol, and I'm going to alcohol my bowl before I put any of my butters in. And I'm going to do this, what I just did, for all of my bowls that I have here, for all of my butters. And I will bring you back when I have everything filled. So I'm going to take this and I'll put it in the water. And when these are all full of butters, I'll bring you back. I just want to say remember to alcohol your thermometer, your scale, any implement that you use. I do it for every product, but it's especially important if you're doing a product. Now this is not going to touch a product, but it's going to touch me, and I'm going to touch product. So, do if you have if you're making a product that doesn't have any preservative, try to alcohol absolutely everything that you can think of. Okay, I want to give you the recipe, and then I want to say a word about recipes. The base of this recipe comes from a woman named Candice, who I believe that body butter was the only thing that she sold. And she was very, very successful with it. And she said that it even shipped well in the summer, which was not my experience, but I'm going to try it uh, this time and see. I've added to this. I'll try to give you the recipe and let you know what was hers and what I've added. Uh, some I'm not so sure. The base, um, I believe all of her original butters, the shea butter, the cocoa butter, the mango butter, and the cocoa butter were all the same. That's what I think. Um, I have 50 grams of shea butter, 70 grams of coke gum butter, 120 grams of mango butter, and 70 grams of cocoa butter. Now you can change that up any way that you like. Um, that's the that's the amounts that I've come up with. But you know you can just Play with the recipe, do it, you know, however you like. I also put in 50 grams of coconut oil and 50 grams of calendula infused oil, which is what I make, and all of my products have that in there. So I know that I think other people have used different oils. You can use sweet almond oil, you can use uh, some people like camomilla seed or camilla seed. I don't. I can't think of how to pronounce it, but it's supposed to be a drier oil. If you think that this might be a little bit too greasy for you or your customers, you might want to try the um, drier oils. And I usually put in about um, somewhere be between the coconut oil, the infused oil. Uh, I usually put in anywhere from 50 to 70 grams. So if you can think of other drier oils that you want, you could put that in. Um, I put in 10 grams of jojoba oil. I think that's what Candace's recipe calls for, but most of mine call for that. 10 grams of argan oil, which I think I added to that. Um, Five grams of beeswax, uh, five grams, oh, five grams of beeswax, and that's because almost all of my products have, 
natural beeswax in it that I get from local honey farmers or beekeepers who do not use preservatives or any practices that harm the bees. And if you use a lot of beeswax in your product, you should really look and see where you're getting it from because the difference between those little white pellets that you get and you couldn't for the life of you figure out it's beeswax versus regular from a beekeeper beeswax is amazing but beeswax can make lotions butters body butters creams a little sticky so i put in only five grams into this particular recipe and i don't remember if candace is called for any i put in 15 grams of seattle alcohol which is an emulsifier which doesn't really need to be in something that's you know old butters and oils but it, it has a nice silky feel. I put in um, I put in three grams of vitamin E. Now my infused oils have vitamin E in it and I would put more vitamin E in if it didn't. I'm, I'm only gonna put a little bit in at the at the very end. Um, 20 grams of isopropyl mirastrate. This is something I've added. This is something I've come to add to a lot of my lotions and creams. It's an emollient. It's a thickener. Not that this needs any thickening. Um, I also, it also cuts down on the greasy feeling. I mean, with all of these butters and all of these oils, it's not, you know, it's climbing a mountain that it's probably going to fall down from. But I like isopropyl mirastrate. It's a nice ingredient. It's optional. You don't have to have it. I put in five grams of liquid silk. Again, optional. My idea, you don't have to put it in. Um, 20 grams of arrowroot powder to cut down on the greasiness. And 10 grams of uh, D-panathol, which you don't have to put in that either. That's my addition. And it just makes it really, really silky and nice. Um, and I believe I said 10 grams of Oregon oil, and I don't remember whose idea that was mine or Candace's. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my butters, my oils, my uh, emulsifiers, and I'm going to put them in the double boiler, and I'm going to melt it, and we'll be back. Now, I'm going to put this in the freezer, so I need a container that goes in the freezer. I'm not going to put my pot in the freezer. So right now, I'm dunking a measuring cup in the boiling water. I'm going to wipe it out, that's hot, and, and I'm going to alcohol it. Now I want to say one thing about recipes. I gave Candace the credit, but if someone doesn't give you permission or put it, you know, somebody puts their recipe on YouTube, um, you know, that's, that's good and it means, you know, basically you can use it. But don't go around copying every single thing that someone does. As you can see, I changed this recipe, and this is an excellent, excellent recipe. But I really didn't want to just copy Candace's, which is like her recipe is an amazing success. I believe it's the only product she sells. And, you know, yet I did not want to completely copycat her. So try to put your own spin on everything and share recipes with others. I know it's really annoying when you have a great recipe that you've worked a long time on, but I'm an author and I've worked a long time on books. And like 280 page book sells for about $14.99. So when I see soap formulators selling formulas for you know, $25 for one recipe that's one page long, it makes me a little crazy. I think that that's outrageous. And I, you know, there's many formulas that I would like and I would like to pay for, many recipes I'd like to pay for, but as an author who gets 7% of the cover price, which is $14.99, I just won't do it. So, um, and I also believe that everybody should share some recipes with others. You should have some free recipes that you give to others and people who say, I never share any of my recipes, I really have no time for and, and I write their name down and I never ever go on their you know site again or watch the videos nothing because I believe that we all had to start somewhere we've all learned from places and we all need to help each other out to a degree I have recipes that I don't that I don't uh, you know make videos for everybody and then I have other recipes where I say you know this is 
mostly what I do, you know, and some of my things are optional and I change them. When I use actives like um, alpha hydroxies and solidic acid and zinc oxide, things like that, I don't put that part of the recipe on the video, but I do, you know, because it takes a long time to figure out how to do those things. So I put, you know, um, a lot of that stuff on uh, the videos, but I don't put putting in the actives because I'm also a lawyer and I don't really want to be sued if somebody, you know, uh, their customer winds up with very red skin because they didn't follow, you know, they put in, you know, 50 grams instead of 5 grams of salicylic acid. So, you know, I really don't want to um, put in, you know, how I, how I incorporate salicylic acid, but I'll give you the rest of the recipe and then you research, you know, it's not that hard. Incorporating salicylic acid is not that hard. Niacinamide is one that's difficult, but, you know, definitely, you know, give out some recipes, respect other people's recipes. You know, let's go for a nice community middle on this stuff. You know, don't get upset if somebody doesn't share all their recipes, especially things that they've worked on for a long time. But I would get upset if somebody didn't ever uh, give any. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to incorporate the Panathol and the, um, actually, am I? No, I'm going to wait. Uh, when I come down to 120 and I add the vitamin E, that's um, when I'm going to add the, um, that's when I'm going to add the arrow powder and the uh, Panathol. So I'm going to put this in the freezer and we'll be back. Okay, so right now it's down around 120, so I'm going to add my dry ingredients and my vitamin E. You can put coloring and fragrance in at this point, and I'm going to go see, I think I might have a light mica that I want to use. I don't like to color this too much because it is a body butter, and I don't really want to turn my customer's skin different colors. Okay, I'm putting in a little bit of uh, diamond dust and 24 karat gold to give it a little bit of a shimmer. And I also put in a little bit of lemon verbena fragrance. I like to use um, I like to use essential oils, but sometimes essential oils people love to slather on body butter, so. I'm very careful with the essential oils and body butter because some people find them irritating even at small amounts. So anything that's a cream or a lotion, I try to go light on the fragrance anyway. So what I have here now is going to go into, oh, that smells like very tiny, tiny hint of lemon, tiny hint. Um, like just a whiff. Okay, and it's a little sparkly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in the freezer and I'm going to uh, get my mixer ready and I'll be back. Okay, this is the fantabulous KitchenAid that the world loves and I hate. I just don't, I just don't like, in my, in my double, in my real cheap double beater, I can take the uh, spatulas that look like this and I can put it in and it will go da -da 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 around, but I can't do that with the KitchenAid. So that bothers me. The uh, fact that so many things stick to the side of the bowl bothers me and the bowl lock thing bothers me. It's like I'm not an idiot and I don't really need a bowl lock and it really makes me nuts putting it on and off. So right now I'm alcoholing it and I dipped my bowl into the boiling water and now I'm going to alcohol that. Now I'm going to pipe this. You don't have to pipe this and sometimes in the in the summertime it's not a good idea to pipe this because it gets, you know, melty. But um, remember to alcohol your piping bag inside and out. I usually spray it down real good before I put it in 
the uh, jar and then after I put it in the jar. So make sure that you are alcoholing the inside of your piping bag if you're piping. And you don't have to pipe this. It's really thick. It's nice. And if you're, you know, I sometimes get very frustrated with the piping and I'll just stop. But I'm going to, I always try to start with it. Okay, so I popped it back into the freezer at like 75 degrees. And now... A lot of it appears to be frozen. It's not completely frozen, but a lot of it's frozen. So we're going to have to break it up. Um, wait, let me see if I can get you back where you were. All right. So I'm just breaking this up and I'm going to put it in here as it melts. Well, that went south quickly, like to the south pole. So, all right, let me start this baby up. Let me see where my camera is. Let's see, okie dokie. Let's start on low while I do this. But I usually like to take it down to about 60 degrees. I mean, I put it back in at 75, and that was, you know, I was never going to whip it at 75. So, you know, it had to go back in, and now it's like 60 and frozen, which I don't understand. <laughs> well, parts of it are frozen. But... <sighs> Let me see what my thermometer says. Just it says 68. Things don't freeze at 68 degrees. <laughs> so who knows? noise? It's like something is tapping against something. Oh, Kitchen A, you drive me bananas. Not a fan, not a fan. I'm going to be paying for this for the rest of my life. Another thing I want to mention is that you want to whip it slowly, which is why I don't like the, why I don't use the stick blender and why I don't really like KitchenAid because the lowest setting on the KitchenAid is still higher than I would like. So if you have a good hand mixer or you have, you know, a very inexpensive stand mixer that goes really slowly, that's really preferable to this. Um, I find that this is just... Um, too high a shear and I would prefer it less so I'm going to stop this right here and you can see you know it's really like whipped cream which is what you want but you know like I said on the, on the less expensive mixers you can take a spatula like this 
and as the beaters are going around, you can actually take, you know, the the body butter off of the beaters while it's going around, which you really can't do with the kitchen aid, which really bothers me. So anyway, um, you don't want to over whip this. So I'm going to let this whip a few more minutes. I'm going to change my gloves and you can see like, you know, it comes into contact and um, you only need a teeny tiny bit. This is very expensive, but you know, one of the things that's really good about it is that you can sell it in small quantities and your customers really only need a little bit. So, you know, you can, um, you know, you can sell it with that in mind. There were actually some chunks when I lifted it out. And um, like I said, when you use the, the dual hand beaters, you really don't get those issues of it sitting in let me show you like this they see all that sitting in there that doesn't happen when you have the two beaters um i actually hate this so i could have used the paddle that probably would have been a better idea but anyway this is what the reason why i hate this i wish it had an option of double beaters but i saw a lot of chunks inside there and i just took them out and gave it another whirl so, here we go. Get all that good stuff out of there and into the piping bag. Into the piping bag. Trying to get it so that you can see the piping. I'm not the world's greatest paper, um, but it looks so pretty when you pipe it. But you don't have to pipe this. I mean, this recipe is really awesome. Um, one of the benefits to piping it is it's, um, well, when you whip it, it's, you know, real airy. So, pump some air into it, makes it a little whipping. But, you know, it makes nice pictures for sale. Sometimes... You know, customers want to know why it's not perfect, like a cake, but, you know, many of us did not go to culinary school, so we don't pipe our skincare products the same way we pipe our chef's, you know, corner bakery. So I just go along the top. I'll show you this in a minute. Just sometimes when I get going, I want to keep going um, because this does, you know, melt at room temperature. So, you know, I want to try to get it piped as fast as I can. And my hands along the outside of it, you know, un again, unlike whipped cream, you know, it's going to melt it. So you know, you're never going to do a good of job with skincare product piping. You know, well, a lot of us aren't. Okay, so this is the piped um, body butter. It's really pretty. Um, if you were going to do, and I might do this, I think this one's going to go to my sister-in-law. Um, this is uh, like an eight ounce um, thing that's going to my sister-in-law. But to sell this, I would probably use this or a small um, glass. You could put this in glass because it's not going in the shower. Um, but this, uh, I probably have enough for two small jars. But this is really pretty and it's really nice. And it smells just a hint of lemon, which is really nice for the summertime. So that's it. That's whipped, piped body butter. Enjoy, have a good time, and knock yourself out. Let me know what you think. Bye, guys.